Hello, Booktube. Today I'm reviewing, after some considerable wait, I'm sorry for that, uh, Citizens by Simon Scama. And unfortunately, the dust cover for this book was torn off. I got a very used copy. I still like this inside cover. It's not bad. Uh, but the image I'll put in the thumbnail is will not be like this. Anyway, this uh, very long book is a history book about the French Revolution. But as the author is clear to point out very early on in the introduction, it's not quite so much like an objective history book per se, it's more like an argument in the form of a history book. And what he means by that is that he uses a particular interpretation of the French Revolution that he wants to explain to people and argue for in the form of a history book. And his interpretation is, I guess I would tell it like this. So he believes that the French Revolution was caused not so much by, actually not very little at all even by class differences as has long been inserted and big like impersonal forces like that sort of thing uh, he believes it was caused mainly by the nobility having a strong desire to reform the state after the humiliation of the seven years war and to create a sort of patriotic renewal and because of that um <clears throat> the revolution wasn't really accountable to things like democracy and equality it was mainly concerned with violence and using the revolutionary um and the ability of the revolution to reform the state and create a modern state and now Apart from the uh, the Oxford book that was also published by the French Revolution, this is the most comprehensive book I'm aware of published in modern times about the French Revolution. There's been plenty more, but this is the one I believe is the most comprehensive like in the last few decades. And I chose it because I'm because right now I'm running this game on a role playing game online set during this time period. I want to read a lot of books about that time period as research, so. Future nonfiction books that are reviewing this channel will probably also be set during that time period. And, you know, I feel like it's important to start out, I think, what is the biggest weakness of this book. And it makes it, I think, wholly unique among history books, but very hard to recommend. It's that it's not really clear at all who the target audience is. You see, on the one hand, this book is, technically speaking, it's a popular history. Because the writing most people wouldn't really get or understand. And there's a lot of academic, precise data and statistics and stuff like that cited. But at the same time, it's it's written, so it's written in these two different styles. We have the popular history way, where it's like a narrative even, with like these strong character descriptions and scene descriptions, events going on. On the other hand, it's an academic in the sense that there's very specific uh, statistical data used. And also, and this is another big weakness, this is not a book for beginners. Like, if you don't know anything about the French Revolution beforehand, this book will just confuse it. Like, it will really confuse you. And you really should not be recommending this book. Even I was confused in part because I don't know a ton about the French Revolution. Although I know quite a bit of it now after having read this. So the book isn't clear whether it wants to appeal to a popular audience or an academic audience. And this uh, vacillation between the two is a really glaring problem. I thought the prologue of this book was rather weak. The introduction was pretty strong. The author makes it clear what he's trying to do, how he's trying to make the history books an argument. But the prologue was kind of weak. It was about the uh, July Revolution, I believe it's called, of the 1830s. And he wanted to talk about how the French Revolution was seen in retrospect by people who lived around the time. And it was rather confusingly written. But the epilogue of this book I thought was very strong, one of the strongest parts of the book, which kind of sums up um, what he was trying to go for, all of his arguments and all that stuff. There are many quotable uh, like thesis statements, which I guess is fitting because you know it's an argument in the form of a history book, as he says. And there are these statements in the book that are kind of like thesis statements, you could say. Like, he talks about specifically how the revolution always required violence to exist, and the reign of terror was not external to revolution. It could not have existed without the reign of terror. And he has overall a very critical view of the French Revolution in terms, like he does not regard it as having been necessary to modernize France. He believes that the old regime was not nearly as ancient and anachronistic as people thought of it as being and actually was on the actually was quite modern in a lot of respects and was on the way towards modernizing it was just serious financial problems that held it back however one thing that he definitely concedes and i think i would also concede after reading this is that he is in awe of the revolution as an, as an artistic force simon skama has a lot of training you notice of his other works as an art historian and he talks extensively in this book, I think this is the strongest sections, about um, the evolution of theater and painting and music as a result of the revolution before and afterwards. And you get this impression that the revolutionary government was a huge patron of the arts. Like they made massive sculpture projects and public works projects and state funerals, 
all in order to express revolutionary ideology. The revolutionary ideology, though, like of the Jacobins, is, I think, really fascinating and probably one of the most unique in history. It cannot at all be categorized as being left-wing or right-wing, at least not in modern terms. It has elements like all ones that are democratic and authoritarian, as elements that are like atheistic and also theocratic contradictions. But somehow, at least to the Jacobins, it made sense, and it made sense to pursue as a state ideology. Now, rather annoying thing about this book, it's <clears throat> it's not much at first, but a really great study over time is the French words in the book. It's like it's an English book, but there are some like words in French that are not translated, but sometimes they are. It's like sporadically translated. And if this were just a few words, he says, like every once in a while, I wouldn't mind. But the problem, is, like a cat here, for instance, or like I don't mind about that. But the problem is that when you see these italicized French sections that get translated, and then ones that don't, and sometimes those are very lengthy sections, it gets really annoying. It makes you wonder, like, what was the editor thinking? Why, or why are some trans translated and some aren't? They should be some consistency at least. There are also, as many other people pointed out, the author <clears throat> doesn't always attack them by name but he attacks a lot of other histories of the French Revolution because he believes that they tend to balk too much because they don't focus enough on the revolutionary violence and the terror, which he believes is essential to the revolution. He's rather critical of that aspect. <clears throat> He's also critical of the neglect given to personalities and people. He feels that the revolution was not just shaped by impersonal forces. It was also shaped by like uh, individual people, the nobility who joined the revolution, various people on that. The various personalities like Talleyrand and Louis XVI and Mirabeau, if I pronounce the name right, those were the real driving forces of the revolution. And he feels that like uh, the historiography, which in modern times he feels is always about impersonal forces like class and economics, neglects that aspect of the revolution, which is an important one. Anyway, I think this book has the potential to have been very strong, and in many ways it is, but it has some issues that overcomes like not knowing who the target audience is, <clears throat> uh, those uh, kind of arguably kind of childish tax on other historians and the weird thing about the French not being translated all the time. Overall, I give us a three and a half out of five stars. If you were a newcomer to the French Revolution and want to know more about it, I would not recommend this book. But if you've read one, two books beforehand or have some background information, I would cautiously recommend it. But there are some peculiarities of the writing style, which I like, but it's definitely not for everyone. So I would not recommend this book. I'll upset cautiously. Anyway, that's all. Uh, remember to please the YouTube algorithm gods by liking, commenting, subscribing, and uh, yeah, bye.